Hello and welcome. These are horse racing selections for Sunday the 18th of June. I am Flat Cap Callum and I'm hoping you are all very, very well. All right, we got Saturday Tea Time upload. Um, so this will be the last upload until Royal Ascot. So Royal Ascot next week. Um, and uh, we will be going probably double stake every day. That would be the plan. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that uh, kind of after I've done the selections. But the plan is to be back Tuesday morning. An unscheduled, well, I'm scheduling it in, but an unusual Tuesday morning video for Tuesday selections for Royal Ascot. So I'll come back to that. As far as Sunday goes, we've got a £20 staking plan. So I've got a full stake £20 for Sunday. I'm only involved in seven races, um, but I've kind of spread it about and done different combinations. I've actually done five bets um, across the seven races. So it works out as two lucky 15s in each way Trixie and two each way double combinations. So that is Sunday. Before I do that, I need to review Saturday, which really wasn't great. Um, so in terms of horses making the frame, it was pretty poor. Um, for the channel stats, because we had three together, uh, we managed to scrape 60% uh, almost uh, of the stake back. That will only count uh, for anyone else who's using Sky. If you haven't got Sky, then you would have got some back um, Probably, I don't know, about five or six pounds less than that, something in the region of that. Um, so let me spin it through. So the, the Unibet special bet didn't quite live up to uh, to its its magic. Um, so that horse on debut was like so bad. Like, I mean, I've had a few bad ones that have unraced ones, but that was that was up there with the, with some of the worst. Um, Archive uh, never looked good and shipped the jockey. Um, and then the other two, were actually in head bobbers for fourth place, but they came fifth, I think, both of them. Um, so if you were on Unibet, you would have just missed out, but you almost got the, the two fourth places uh, with the Unibet. But it was a zero return for everyone. So that was uh, no good. Um, this one, uh, one out of the placings, that, that, and, and we got a place. That was it. So one place, so about 43 pence, I think it was, back on that. Combination, uh, no, this is Lucky 15. So we started off there. That's, this is the one that paid. So Repertoire was fifth. It was very close fourth. So it only paid for Sky. Lady Hamama then went and won. It was backed in just before the off down to nines. Channel had it at 16s with a 20p rule four. But I know quite a few probably got 20s on that. So that would be nice for them. Uh, Eminency, 12 to one, then placed. Safari Dream wasn't far away. And Eldrick Jones uh, wasn't any good. So... Uh, a place double on uh, that one. If you're not Sky, it was a place treble. So let me try again. Leg A, you got a place treble with the winner. Leg B, you got a place. If you weren't with Sky, you just got the winner on its own. So profitable bet all round, but Sky would have won out on that one. So that was bet three. And then uh, this was the combination bet. Ah, oh, annoying. So uh, twice in two days, we've done one. We've got short ones and big ones. And uh, yeah, both days, both short ones got placed. Um, so uh, yeah, no no good on the second leg. We had a couple that were a close-ish, but nothing really to get excited about. So nothing back on that one. And then some funny old things going on in, <laughs> in this one. That wasn't too far away, ran OK race odd ride there clearly wasn't something right with the horse it got backed into something stupid like seven to two and you could have got 20s um arabus gato not good enough and fernico not good enough so yeah it didn't feel like a very good day but the stats kind of say we sort of scraped some money back so miraculously we're going into sunday on the channel stats 30 quid up um oh knocking about with my light sorry uh 30 quid up um which means we're guaranteed to win this week, make a profit this week, albeit it could only be a small one. So it's £20 down on Sunday, 30 up going into the weekend. So we're guaranteed at least £10 profit. That won't be the case for everybody. I think there'll be some that may be just a couple of quid behind. Um, but this week, I'll, I, I, without sort of trying to work out all the complications and variables, it's very difficult. Everyone uses different bookmakers and gets different prizes in different terms. But generally speaking... Channel's going to finish up. I think most people wouldn't be too far off being up if, if you're not already there. Um, which does mean uh, we'll finish three weeks three weeks in a row in profit. So June is in profit. 
Um, so after our torrid start at the beginning of the year, we've now it will be we we will have won six out of the last nine weeks. Um, so nicely turned round, um, and uh, and heading into Royal Ascot. So um, yeah, everything's kind of all right. I mean, in the last two days, I think we've we've, we've scrambled back. So to to have lost ten quid in the last two days for channel stats um, is quite remarkable, given that the strike rate was actually poor both days. All right, Sunday. So. Sunday and there's quite a bit of bookmaker variance to flag to you on Sunday as well. Um, so I'm going to start with an each way Trixie for our twenty pound plan bet one, one fifty five Gorham Park Distillate twelve to one, two o five Doncaster uh, Royal Musketeer at tens and the three forty Gorham Park Von Crowlock sixteens. So been following this trainer owner combination uh, a bit on the channel did it a bit last year and on it again this year and i've got a couple of the their horses run at goran goran's where they love running um i haven't gone for the full the full lot of their selections but i'm putting in von crowluck in this one so it's a 25p each way trixie two pound bet sky best so you've got sky six there most bookies five Sky five, most four, but not all. So watch out on this one. Don't do this bet on Paddy or Hills if you can avoid it. And then Van Crowlock um, is four on most, but not three, six, five. So that means Sky are best. And then next, Labrick's Coral Betfred, when you can get Bog. And you can probably put this on, maybe probably what. Coral probably won't let you put it on the night before because they'll probably restrict multiples on that Doncaster on the Goran Park 155. But in the morning when Bog's on for everyone, Labrooks, Coral, Betfred, and then if you've not got that, Betfair's next best. Two pound is your bet. Um, I should flag as well that 155 Goran Park. Um, I did put up in the comments a bit of a price flash. I'm just going to check it live on the screen um, if I can actually uh, get into this. Brilliant. Um, for a horse that I'm not backing on the channel, but I did say back it with three six five. So I'm just checking if it's still there. Uh, yes, Monitola the one fifty five. This is still live right now. It will change at some point. But Monitola in the one fifty five Goran Park. It is generally eights across the board, seventeen to two in places. It did open at sevens in places. But 365 are 25 to 1. So they are three times the odds of the average bookmaker. If I, if I could get 25 on most bookmakers or Sky, I'd put it in the selection plan. I wouldn't want to back it at 8 to 1. I would I would think it's okay down to about 12s. Um, I think it's probably around about, that's where it might end up maybe. But 365, if you've got 365 and worth checking, it's been live like that for an hour and i thought it would go much quicker than that but monitor the 155 goran park it is worth staking at 25 to 1 however you choose to, to do it it's worth as a single but if you want to put in other combinations but if the 25 to 1 you can get is an absolutely cracking price for a horse that should be about 12s and others have got it a bit too short in my view um it's one of these ones it it it, it ran first time in handicap and it was really really poor but it looks, just my feel of, of how I've read the form, I think I kind of feel like it might be one that bounces. So you hear me talk a lot on here about sometimes horses running maidens and novices three times, they get the handicap mark, and then lo and behold, they're much, much better in a handicap. That is the most common way of, of people doing things. The next most common way of doing things is even cleverer than that. They run three times in novice and handicap races, sorry, novice and maidens, they don't run very well, then they go on handicap debut. People think, oh, maybe, and it runs a duffer. Um, and then you're thinking, okay, well, that's not a very good horse. It's the second time they're running a handicap. This is a bit of an Irish trick. Second time in a handicap. That's the time you want to be on because that's the time the money's going to be down. So I think I feel like it's one of them. But um, but eight to one, it wasn't for me for the channel. Um, so bet two. Uh, 155 value horse for the day definitely is Kalahari Queen in the same race 50 to 1 on that I'd much rather be on at 50 to 1 at that than uh, Monitola at 8 um, so 205 Doncaster Gypsy Whisper 25s I haven't quite caught that I mean 25s is still good but it's been coming in it was 40s at opening price 230 Goran Park Silken Ladder 14s 
I spotted that in the afternoon um, on Saturday and thought that's a little gem at 25s. It's gone into 18. So that is 305 Shanti Novakai. It's running in the French Oaks. Most bookies are four, Sky are five. 25s were still available at the time of doing this video on Coral. So worth having a little look to see if you, if for a single, 25s on Novakai, four places on Coral for the French Oaks is a particularly good price, but 18s will take. So um, what we've got here is a 20p each way lucky 15 on all four. I've got a 50p each way single on Carola Hari Queen, and I've put two 25p each way extra singles on Gypsy Whisper and Novakai. Sky Best, then 365, and then 888 or Betfred. Eight pound is the bet on that one, that is bet two. The watch out here is I think 365 are pretty much the only ones not 50s at the moment, like Kalahari Queen. Um, so from a singles point of view, you want to shop around and try and get that 50s. Um, so that is bet two. Then bet three is one of our combination double bets. We've got the 155 Gore and Kalahari Queen and Distillate, as already mentioned, going on to the 205 Doncaster Gypsy Whisper and Royal Musketeer, as already mentioned. Four times 25p each way doubles. Sky Best, and then either 365 Coral, Ladbrokes or Betfred. So that's 365 Coral, Ladbrokes or Betfred when you're getting bog. They are next best. Two pound is your bet. I told you the bookie advice is a bit different. This one gets more different. So this is the one for paddy users. So we've got the 230 Goran Park uh, Cappuccino, Cappuccinero 12, 16 is available on 365. 255 Down Patrick. This one's on the, in, the coming in. It was 25s. Um, I think that one's going to come in a bit more. Lady Insuit 18s. 340 Camp Goran Park Shimmerick 10s. And finishing off. This was a horse that was in, um, I think it was a comments horse. It was very, very unlucky to not, not do a lot better. So it, it's not the best prize, but 415 Goran Park, Silky Sib, 8s. You can get 10s on 365. So I'm not advising 365 for this bet because 365 are only three here when most bookies are four. So it's a 20p each way lucky 15. Six pound is the bet. So the best bookies, if you get in bog, are Paddy and Betfred. Then without bog on multiples, Sky, Hills, 888 or Betfair. Six pound is the bet. And then finally, bet five, second combination double, 230 Goran Park, Cappuccinero 12, Silk and Ladder at 14, going on to the 340 Goran Park, Shimmerick at 10s and Van Crowlock at 16s. Fourth time 25 Peachway doubles. Same advice as bet four, Paddy or Betfred first. And if you're getting bog on Sunday morning, if you're not getting bog and doing that before, um, then it doesn't matter. Then it could be those or Sky or Hills, AAA or Betfair. They are all the same place terms, which is basically four places on each of those races. That is bet five. OK, thus completes um, the uh, staking plan for Sunday. Word on the golf. Uh, there's no progress since since. Uh, last video because they're only really getting going in round three so we, we've got our three that have made made the line so we've got Dylan Wu, uh, Aaron Eckrot and Kevin Strillman so three of the five in the main market made it in to the cut the 65 players left so we're looking for can any of them get top 10 that's the first port of call if not how many of them can we get in the top 30 and we want two in the top 30 out of those by Sunday night um, and then you'll have had a profitable bet on those. So I'm pretty pleased with that, to be fair. To get three in, um, it was good, and two of them are solidly in, because uh, Dylan Wu's like my, uh, two under, and Eckrot's one under. Kevin Strawman's the one that needs a bit more work, but there's not much in it in terms of shots, so we'll see how we go on the golf. And then... Uh, Penultimately, penultimately, yeah. um, I, don't, I don't know what's going on in the comments today, I tell you. Um, just everybody's got a different view. Some people just act like it's sport to come in and, and, and say rude things and, and see what reaction people get and stuff. And generally, the people that do say these things also coincidentally happen to be excellent, uh, excellent punters, um, allegedly. Uh, it's just... It's fascinating. It's fascinating. If you were a really, really good punter, would you really then spend your life going onto YouTube channels and commenting on people that you think aren't very good? Why would you do that? Seems like a weird hobby. Um, if you're good at punting, just do that then. But uh, yeah, fascinating. Fascinating what people do. 
Um, but equally, I do accept, 100%, do accept what I do, and I've said this so many times, for a lot of people on glancing, they don't get it. They just see a lot of bets and they see a lot of big prices and they don't get it. So they either go, I don't get the big prices because you shouldn't be bracking them, or I don't get the lots of bets, or I don't get all the multiples. People, That's what people will say. All I will say is what I always say to you, and I've said to, to, for nearly 18 months, judge me in the long term. If you look at the long term and you look at my strike rate long term, you'll see what's there. So, um, yeah, we're on about... Um, 31% I think since the channel started still so 31% uh, there I think for the year I think I, I haven't checked it today I think it's I think it's I mean it'll be in the description I think it's about 17-18% for the year um, we were obviously 36% for horses last year 31% overall 18-19% this year um, for those that are interested that, that that kind of conversion rate should should be around so from a sky perspective I'd rate Sky worth about five to six percent extra. So if we're saying thirty-one percent, roughly speaking, it's twenty-five to twenty-six percent without Sky. I haven't worked that out in complete, like, but I know where I sit with my own profit and loss for things I do off the channel, and I don't use Sky bet accounts, so I kind of know where it's at from that. I also track my singles, as some of you know, um, on OLBG. I never get. It's probably I've said that in the wrong order, probably. But um, yeah, I don't do that to, to kind of make money. That's a tips to site that some people are aware of. But I literally just put all of the channel selections in there as single bets so I can track from a, a strike rate point of view. And there was a question about strike rate. So strike rate the last 12 months has been 26% on there. So that means there's no standout sky extra places on there. That is what percentage of horses are making the frame. And on OLBG, it's 26% for 12 months. That's where it stands. Um, all right, and then last thing, Royal Ascot. So, um, plan for Royal Ascot. I'm going to do one extra video, which will be Tuesday morning. So the plan is Tuesday morning, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and then it might be Thursday night, Friday morning, not sure which one. And then it might be Friday night, might be Saturday morning, not sure which one. But I'll be covering Ascot each day. My plan is to not do much else outside of Ascot. Um, I'll see and the plan is to double stake each day and like I've done previously for Ascot and Cheltenham although I go, no, don't go as big on Ascot um, I'll plan my plan is to, to put a lot more singles in the staking plan so it's not going to be flooded with with um, loads and loads of multiples so it's entirely up to anyone what they choose to do with that whether they want to back the whole thing at £40 and let's imagine half of it might be singles I don't know something like that whether you want to do it like that or whether you just want to do the multiples, it's up to you. But for the channel, I'll be putting it on singles. The other thing I'll be doing for channel that I, for consistency that I've done for Ascot and Cheltenham before is it will all be SP prices. So I'll be putting up the guide price, but I'll be taking and recording for stats starting prices for Ascot. Um, so I'm not looking to try and find outstanding prices because the markets generally are, are, are formed a lot earlier. Um, all right, so... Back Tuesday morning for Royal Ascot. Uh, last year, around Royal Ascot, how did we do? We came out ahead, but we had a really good day on the Tuesday. We started off well, and then it just sort of petered out, and we managed to still stay over the line and uh, and come out ahead for Royal Ascot last year. Um, but it sort of tapered off a little bit, so uh, we will see. In the big festivals, Cheltenham, we won decent on year one. We lost on year two. Ascot, we won on year one, but it was a struggle at the end. We'll see how we get on in year two. All right, that is me. I'll see you Tuesday morning. That's if you're interested in Royal Ascot, but why wouldn't you? All right, thank you very much. Enjoy your Sunday before you get to that and enjoy your Monday as well. Bye-bye.